the the gap. So you know where uh, Janet and I were like right in that wave yeah. in the in the nineties, uh, late nineties and, and early aughts. And um, at that point, so we had an autism diagnosis, and 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 doctors didn't have much help for us. Schools didn't know what to do really, and and that created a vacuum that yeah, I think the, that, that I think the snake oil salesman just Big time. straight for. And I just remember uh, I made a list of, of the various things that you were supposed to do to cure your kid. Wow. Um, it was take your kid, take your child to Tibet to ride horses. Wow. Uh, play certain kinds of music. Uh, either when they're asleep, sometimes when they're asleep, only when they're awake. There are several wow. different versions of it. Swim with dolphins. Filter your water. Wow. Magnets on their wrists. Wow. Biofeedback. Don't immunize right. them. Right. Uh, chelation therapies. Right. And and it was like uh, you felt you felt bad for not chasing every single one. Right. And it's like there'd be this article of this cured my son, and you go okay, and then you look around and go, and so this cured one kid. And it was not reproducible. And plus, it probably <laughs> didn't, you know. Well, I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, yeah, we used to call it the threat of a cure. That, you know, that, that's that hilarious, you did, yeah. That you didn't chase. Right, you know? right, right, right. And, and, um, no, and parents are spending money they don't have yeah. to do these things. And, you know, God knows, you know. And also the other thing, I mean, eventually that, that blogger, like, admitted that what she really wanted in the book were more parents who, quote, unquote, hated their children's autism. Um, here's the thing. Uh, yes, I understand that raising an autistic child is very, very difficult. But there's something true from studies of families with disabled children that the attitude that the parents take towards the child's disability has a lot to do with how they feel about their own lives and the, li and the potential of their children. And so when parents tell like really negative stories about the kid's disability, it actually has a real life bad effect on both the parents and the kids. So it's like, yes, I don't quote a lot of parents in my book saying, I, I love my child, but I hate their autism. You know, because autistic people have told me that they experience themselves as people, not as people plus autism outside of them, you know? And so um, I didn't really think it was a good idea to like, quote a lot of parents saying, you know, I hate my child's autism because it's a story that could have a really bad effect on both the parents and the children. Mm -hmm. So the, your recent article, uh, October 6th for BBC um, Future, uh, you kind of nailed it down to four myths of autism. Yeah. And, and the... Um, there are like a thousand, but yeah, there was only yeah. room for four. Well, yeah. and, and it was, it's, I think it's a good, it still kind of broadly characterizes yeah. it really well. Mm -hmm. The first was that autism used to be rare, but now right. it's common. That's the biggest one. Like, yeah. boy, if I, could, if, you know, if I could grant one wish, it's like if people would just realize autistic people have always been here, we should have been taking care of them 50 years ago. We were not. We still have a chance. You know, but as long as that notion is current that, you know, it used to be rare, now it's common, we're not going to do anything right because we're going to put millions of dollars into finding the, the mysterious factor in the toxic modern world. Whether You know, I love Neil Young, but Jesus Christ, did he have to blame Monsanto and with that stupid video from MIT that half of the world's children will be autistic by 2025 because of Monsanto? Like, okay. you know, God. Yeah. Anyway. The, the second one was that, that people with autism lack empathy. Yeah, well, that, yeah, the way that I talked about that is that people with autism and neurotypicals actually sometimes have a hard time reading each other's feelings. You know, it's like a lot of the autistic people that I know are pretty good at reading the feelings of other autistic people. Um, I would say that one thing that's challenging, like, I actually hate speaking about this is challenging for autistic people when I'm not an autistic person, you know? But I would say that there is a challenge with perspective taking sometimes, mm -hmm. like seeing the world from, through another person's eyes. Um, that seems to be true from my own experience, but I don't want to generalize and I don't mm -hmm. want, you know, and I think that um, some autistic people are better at it than others. So are some neurotypical people, you know, but it's not about like not caring about how the other person feels. Like I know many autistic people who are practically immobilized by how much they care about how 
another person feels. Mm -hmm. so. and, and afraid of making a mistake. Right, exactly. It's like kind of paper lock. Right? Exactly. No, I was driving with a friend of mine who loves to drive, an autistic friend of mine, and he made a little traffic mistake and ended up on the sidewalk. And I, 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 I freaked out. I was like, my God, you know? And he like was crying for like 10 minutes because he thought that I was thinking he was a bad driver and he really cared about how I felt. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, Interesting. yeah. The, um, the, the third was, was, which to me really speaks to neurodiversity, was that the goal should be to make autistic children indistinguishable from their peers. Right, yeah, well I mean that was, you know, there's a, one of the many difficult chapters in my book is about the early days of Ivar Lovas, the inventor of ABA. And um, whatever you might think about ABA now, uh, back in the 60s, it wasn't good. You know, it was like, I mean, it wasn't just ABA. Ivar Lovas was using cattle prods to shock the children in this clinic. And people were suggesting that parents should have cattle prods at home. Um, the use of aversive stimuli was very prevalent. Um, I was very glad to see that back then, the first wave of resistance to aversive stimuli was from parents. No, we are not using a cattle prod on our child. You know, I mean, now it seems like, of course, who would ever do that? Back then, you know, the authorities were saying, like, this is what you have to do. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. That's, yeah. Well, and that's, that speaks to curing your child. Right. You know, that, they, that there's something that needs to be totally fixed. Right. Um, the, let's see if I had. Oh, the fourth was um, we're just over-diagnosing quirky kids. Yeah, I hear that a lot. Um, you know, people say, like, people who think they know something, like, say to me, aren't we just over-diagnosing these quirky geeks, you know? Don't they, isn't it just a label? Well, uh, I have met very few people who got an official diagnosis of autism who didn't seem to really struggle in day-to-day -day life. Like, virtually every person I've ever met with official diagnosis it was, you know, became apparent, if not immediately, after a while, that they were really struggling in day-to-day -day life. You know, some people diagnose themselves after taking a quiz on the internet or whatever. Um, I think that we should respect that for the most part. Um, I have heard of some kids who may have had ADHD who got diagnosed with autism because the services were better. That's a problem with the services. But my main point is this. I think autism is still underdiagnosed, particularly among women and among minorities, basically. And in fact, if you look at the CDC, you know, the CDC number is now one in 68. That's a fictitious number, really, because it's averaged out from many different data sources. And in Florida, Hispanic families seem to have a very low incidence of autism. And so if I was writing for the age of autism, I would say, there's some protective factor that maybe it's something in the diet. You know, actually, it's lack of health care. Hello. You know? Yeah, lack of someone really paying right. attention. We've kind of blown through my topics, which is great. Right. 